I'm Shay Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is Bruce Lane, the CEO of the now called American Uranium, formerly known as GTI Energy. Bruce, it's fabulous to see you. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, Shay. Good to be back again. Now, we'll touch on the name change in just a moment. First of all, I wouldn't mind starting with where you are. I believe you're currently in London at the World Nuclear Symposium. And correct me if I'm wrong, did Microsoft just join a nuclear body of types? It was announced at this symposium, wasn't it? Yeah. Hi, Shay. I'm at the uh, yes, the World Nuclear Association's um, annual symposium in London. And yeah, that was... Pretty unusual, Microsoft uh, have joined the World Nuclear Association, uh, which I guess speaks volumes to their um, concerns about getting lots and lots of firm electrons to drive their data centres. And they're not the only ones in that space that are at the conference. The the hyperscalers um, are here. In fact, I've got a, um, a session or a short meeting with somebody from Amazon Web Services today um, in their nuclear risk department. So, you know, that just, uh, I guess, indicates that they are deadly serious about getting much more involved in nuclear. They certainly are. And I think you've just used a word there that I haven't heard used before in this context. Did I hear you say the word hyperscalers? Is that correct? Yeah. And, and, and look, that term's thrown around a bit, but essentially, um, you know, the, the hyperscalers are the, are the, are the groups, that, mostly the Magnificent Seven, you know, Oracle, uh, Amazon, Meta, um, obviously uh, X, um, you know, Elon Musk, um, Google, Alphabet, they're all building these massive uh, data centers uh, and, uh, and AI processing capabilities. And, and the scale of these is, is a bit hard to comprehend. And the amount of electricity they need is also pretty hard to comprehend. And that's one of the big uh, talking points at the conference is that this demand for electricity is something that, you know, we really haven't seen in the world since the last time there were a massive number of nuclear power plants built, you know, from about the 70s onwards. And so that's um, the talk is, well, how, how does the industry, industry respond? How can they build nuclear power plants faster and cheaper? And how can they supply the fuel all, all up and down the uh, nuclear fuel value chain? So, um, look, it, it is a, a, an interesting time. Uh, lots of talk. Um, you know, what we need to see is more of these things being built. And I guess our, without wanting to labour this too much, we love all that. But at the end of the day, there's restarts and life extensions. And in the US in particular, which we're focused on, you know, they use a quarter of the world's uranium, still the largest nuclear power provider in the, in the world at around 100 gigawatts. So we don't really need all that extra demand. We just need the fact that they need 50 million pounds and they currently produce less than a million pounds a year. Now, as I said at the start of today's conversation, you have changed your name to American Uranium. Is this a signal that you are now focused on the American market? Yeah, look, we've been focused on the American market since 2019, really, when we first embarked upon uh, our uranium activities in Utah. And since then, you know, we've, we've we spun out our gold assets um, back in, uh, in 2020. And so we are and always have been focused on uh, American uranium. And, and so we thought we've been contemplating a name change for a while. And so we've changed our name and consolidated our capital and, uh, you know, hopefully the name says what's in the tin. You know, we, uh, we are, there's a very unique opportunity in America. You know, the largest um, user of nuclear power, user of uranium on the planet. And really, they are not at all self-sufficient at this point. They used to produce 44 million pounds a year, currently producing less than one. And with everything that's been coming out of the White House, let alone all the extra demand from the likes of the data centers and hyperscalers, there's clearly an opportunity to fill that gap, and that's what we're targeting. Now, just to add to the progress that is happening for American uranium, your nearby neighbour, Chiola Herma project in Wyoming, Snow Lake Energy, has taken a 9.9% stake in the company. Uh, this sounds like positive news. What does it mean for the company going forward? It is positive news um, for us, Shay. Uh, Snow Lake are in a joint venture with GUE for the on the property immediately to our north and abutting us called Pine Ridge. So that's an exploration stage project. It's got a large exploration target on it, uh, but it doesn't have a current resource. 
So they've come in uh, to our company because they obviously like the idea of having a more advanced project. I mean, we've got 8.57 million pounds, 32% of that is indicated. And we put out a positive scoping study earlier on this year. So we're much more advanced than the Pine Ridge project. So they can see the benefit of having a sequence there with our project and the large exploration target next door. We've got an exploration target of up to an additional 11 million pounds as well. So if you put together the two projects, it's a very substantial land holding right in the middle of some of the best parts of Wyoming and the Powder River Basin. So strategically, you can see why they're interested. It is only a 9.9% .9 stake. They've got a right to appoint somebody to the board. And so we look forward to seeing how that evolves. I mean, there's clearly some collaboration opportunities there. Their geology is you know, analogous to ours. Our trends run to the north into their property, and we'll be exploring up to their boundary this year. So I guess the breadcrumbs are there. We'll see how it evolves, but it's a really good step for us and a really good endorsement of what we're doing. Uh, it certainly is, and congratulations on this strategic investor. Listen, Bruce, I want to thank you very much for your time, and I will let you get back to the symposium. I look forward to speaking again. Great, Shay. Thanks. Good to talk to you again, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up soon.